presented by that time I got reincarnated in the same world as an anime podcaster, this is Shonen Jumping the Gun! The show where we set our sights on the first chapter of a manga and decide if it's a misfire or a bullseye. Let's see how many rounds are in this magazine. Draw your sword, it's Demon Slayer! Hey everybody, what's up? Yeah, that's it! We're talking about Demon Slayer! Oh yeah! It's your main man, K-Frog, here with Donnie Sakaimus. Yo, what's going on, folks? Are you ready? Are you ready to kill some demons? We're here talking to you today about Demon Slayer! Demon Slayer! <laughs> That's right, Demon Slayer, the most popular manga of all time! Of all time, Isakaimus! The money making, the sword slaying, it's demons! And we're gonna talk to you about it for the next 20 to 30 minutes! How about that Nezuko, am I right, fellas? Oh yeah! Oh yeah, that Nezuko! How weird is it that the main character has superpowers that he can smell he really can good? He can smell this, Tanjiro. <laughs> <laughs> Drive time morning. It's K-Frog and Don Isakaimus. <laughs> what was that? Hey, hey, you can't come in here. What are you doing? What are, you do what are those? So yeah, they're they're dead. We're not we're not talking about that. Thank God, who even let them in here? Hi, we're gonna get rid of the pattern tree. Hi, it's Kermit the Grog. I'm here with Isuke Sensei Sama Brad, as I always am. We're covering Demon Slayer. There's no there's no gimmicks. There's no characters. This is episode thirty. We're talking about Demon Slayer. <laughs> We got tired after the uh, we did after two, episode twenty. We did two gimmick episodes and said no. <laughs> I don't want to do that again. <laughs> so we are once again jumping back, but not as far back as our last couple. No, but pretty far. Two hundred and what twelve chapters? Yes, but within the last decade, almost. I mean, that's not yes. saying much. <laughs> not much. No, but like our other ones were like multiple decades back, mm -hmm. and this was within. Not the like 2020 decade we're in, but right. this one's going to be the conversation I've been wanting to have on all these old ones for these special episodes. But I feel like it's fun to start with this one because it's like the newest of these is what can you see from chapter one mm -hmm. for this to become literally one of the most money makingest manga of all time? You know, it's it's interesting because for the Dragon Ball, I did talk to Chuck's on a little bit about that. We but we were sort of framing that in such a way as like, oh, we don't, we have no idea how this is going to turn out. Like, could we really tell, um, considering that Truxon um, got it as it was coming yeah. out? I want to say something fun with Dragon Ball, though, because I made sure to get this. Because Demon Slayer is already in the same bracket that Dragon Ball is for money made just on the manga. And I found when I was Googling for that, Wikipedia has the... What is it? The highest grossing media franchises of all time. So like both manga, anime, movie, merch, all of it collectively, the most money it made. Mm -hmm. And I need you to know that Demon Slayer, the, the two closest ones beneath it are Thomas the Tank Engine and Friends and Angry Birds. So it made more money than those two media franchises. Wow. But it is underneath Dragon Ball and James Bond. Okay, that makes sense. So not in general immediate, but like this is a thing that has only been around less than a decade mm -hmm. because the manga started, I have it here, February 15th, 2016. 2016, actually, that's farther back than I thought it would be. That's But that's less we're than a decade. We're closing in on a decade. Exactly. I know we're still, <laughs> like, it's, we're getting close to a decade on that, but like all the things that I listed have been around multiple, okay, uh, Angry Birds, not as much. Um, which goes to show you how much freaking money Angry Birds has made. What was that, 2008? But, like, the fact that, what, uh, Demon Slayer's listed as 9.32 billion and Dragon Ball is 9.54 billion. Like, wow. the fact that this thing that, what, Dragon Ball's been around since, like, the 80s and yeah. is and has been a global media franchise. Since the mid-90s. Yes. For at least three decades. Mm -hmm. 
And the fact that Demon Slayer, this upstart that hasn't been around for a decade, and hey, we haven't talked about it on a podcast, a series that I don't think is actually that great, <laughs> um, has is 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 chomping at its heels is insane. I don't think it'll overtake it unless we get new Demon Slayer, like meaningful new Demon Slayer stuff in the way right. that we, we are constantly getting new Dragon Ball things. Um, but I did want to say, because for our Bleach episode, we didn't really actually talk about what we thought of the chapter no um and and just to say that i i did get some sense from that chapter of like oh this is this might this might do it i would love to be able to compare bleach to similar things around it from its from when it came out because it is such of a time and i think there's a certain thing some of it is you know that it's big but like going back it's like a time capsule and there's a certain extra like zest to it that we just is not we don't use that spice anymore. Mm. We use different spices because that's how food works. Our tastes change, so we <laughs> change our spices. Like it's not a, like a. This is. I wanted to make sure that it was clear that wasn't a, like a back in my day situation right. or comment. It's not like things are different. I did an entire panel about it being mm-hmm. different. Um, um, yeah. Future like we are we are going to invoke future vision. Like this is not a normal episode. This is just we will do a summary though. Um, but right off the top. Ran from February 15th, 2016 to May 18th, 2020, 205 chapters. Oh, it ended that far back? Yep. Yep. Wow. Yeah. It's so weird. Um, Because what? Season one would have come out right as it was ending, right? Season one, I want to say, was like a year before that. Okay. That seems about right. Um, but uh, uh, it, is the, it is the ninth sellingest manga of all time. I can see it. Everything else on that list is like is incredibly old comparatively. Mm-hmm. It is things from the the seventies, the eighties, and the nineties. Like it's like nearby like that Kochi Kami police thing that's in Shonen Jump that never really got brought to America because trying to translate or localized comedy gag manga is like right. a, you're just burning money practically. <laughs> we're we're blessed to get Roboco at all. Um but like this is a pillar. Yeah. This is the upstart. This is, this is, but it, but it came out in our lifetime, like in our conscious lifetime. It's the thing I think about back when I talked about when I did a lot of like Disney stuff decades, I say decades ago now, at least a decade ago, where it's like the Disney princesses in your head are a certain set, but there are certain ones that like, oh, Rapunzel came after I was alive and conscious. Mm. Um, Elsa and Anna came after I was conscious. Uh, what's her name from um, uh, the, 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 the princesses and the frog? Um, Tiana came after i was alive yeah, like they're no not what her name is. yeah um <laughs> you know i the... wrote a big paper on this but it's like it's like th- these other things were pillars cinderella and um i was about to say pocahontas but that is snow white snow white like these are like pillars technically jasmine um yeah. and that like these are pillars in ariel like from around before i was alive and conscious like they're just woven into it and these are the new ones, and they're gonna stick around in it. But it's like Demon Slayer is me being alive and being able to see this pillar come up from nothing, and I, it's gonna, it has to stick around. It has made too much money. <laughs> I think you can really tell though by just like walking around a mall, yep, and just going, oh my god, every store that has anything to do with pop culture has some Demon Slayer shit in it. I see it all over the place. Yeah, I don't get it. I don't know. So. We'll have our thoughts then. Well, I want to do the summary first. For then. for anyone who doesn't know what Demon Slayer is, here's a summary of the here's first. Here's a summary chapter. of the first chapter. <laughs> so it, this is more so you can go back to the past to read. The, <laughs> I'm not going to name a video game name reference again. This is basically letting you kind of check in on what it is. I am going to just name characters the names they are as we know them because I don't think we learned the Tanjiro's name for a while. But I'm just going to call him Tanjiro because it's like this is a this is a no nonsense. You know what's going on. It says Tanjiro. In the... At some point, but not like from moment one. I'm moment oh, one okay, calling. Sure, I'm sure. never calling him Protag Kun in this because it's like I'm not beating around the bush. He's Tanjiro. Sweet boy Tanjiro walks with a bloodied sister Nezuko on his back. Big brother is gonna save her. Splash page with Tanjiro and Nezuko looking so not how they look facial expression wise. Cut to before Tanjiro is ready to go out and sell as much charcoal as he can, while his mother warns him how dangerous and snowy it is. His younger siblings excitedly want to join him in this, but they can't. Then we see Nezuko with baby, not hers, and it's mentioned dad died. Tanjiro thinks as he walks through the snowy woods how times are tough and always changing. Quote, when happiness ends, there's always the smell of blood in the air, which is like such a... Yeah, really. Tanjiro makes it to town, and he's a favorite among the townsfolk, uh, specifically putting his expert nose to you solving who broke a dish. Spoiler alert, it was the cat. 
After a long day, Tanjiro is ready to head home, but a man warns him how dangerous it is outside and to stay with him. There's demons out there eating people, he says. Tanjiro stays and is reassured demons can't come inside because demon slayers cut them down, as they have for ages. But also, demons aren't real? But also, that's what Grandma said before she died? The next morning, Tanjiro walks home to find his entire family brutally slaughtered and a bloodied but still warm Nezuko, who he picks up to hopefully find a doctor with. He thinks maybe a bear did it, but come on, you know the series. Also, it's called Demon Slayer, dipshit, not Golden Kamui, where we do learn about bears that will fuck your shit right up. Oh, also, friendly reminder, Demon Slayer takes place after Golden Kamui, chronologically speaking. Japan has already fought Russia and has machine guns and bombs and big boats with cannons and beer and cars. The world is in World War I during Demon Slayer, and if Tanjiro survives, he will be alive for World War II. Okay, back to the story. Tanjiro is working so hard walking through the snow, but then Nezuko wakes up and is all like a crazy demon and tries to kill Tanjiro, but also Nezuko can't be a killer despite being larger and stronger all of a sudden. Tanjiro, big brother, cheers her on and she cries before a demon slayer shows up to try and kill her, but they dodge out of the way. He asks why Tanjiro hasn't killed her, and, and dude, it's his only surviving family member, and the dude is like, I'm a demon slayer and it's my job and stuff. Also, we learn demons make other demons with their blood. The two go back and forth. Tanjiro begs and get yelled at for showing weakness. The Slayer is saying only the strong can get what they want. Uh, a bunch of junk about emotions. It's not important. You've seen the anime probably. Who cares? Tanjiro It pulls... is important, but yeah. go on. It's not to me anymore. I'm hollow inside. <laughs> Tanjiro pulls some puzzle battler shit that never again happens across the entire series by throwing a snowball with one hand and secretly tossing his hatchet into the air to arc and hit the demon slayer before charging said dude. The axe almost hits him, and in the moment of confusion, Nezuko escapes his grasp and goes to eat Tanjiro. Sorry, I mean protect Tanjiro, she doesn't eat him. The siblings pass out and wake back up in the snow. Nezuko now has her classic bridle in her mouth, and the pair are told to go meet an old man in the mountains for help, and that Nezuko shouldn't be in direct sunlight. And so our journey begins. I didn't know the name of the demon, so I even know he's an important character. I've never learned his name. He's not interesting Giryu. to me. What? Giryu. Gary. His name's Gary. Okay. I That's forgot. His Christian name. I forgot that. <laughs> They're here. The country is opened. They have an American. They're celebrating Christmas. They stopped having it be closed. They stopped having it be closed thirty years ago. Because what did I say? Did I say um, he opened it post? No, it was no. I lied. He opened it pre Civil War, American yeah. Civil War. We are post American Civil War in Demon Slayer. So you sound a little bit salty. I'm still just really pissy that Demon Slayer takes like seals like it's in samurai time and takes place in 1910 when like the, like the Kaiser is alive. I mean there's a freaking train. What? There's the whole the whole No, but they've had Japan has had trains since we addicted them to trains. The yeah. train is not that interesting. They've had the train for at least what? 30, 40, 40 years now? 40 years. Yeah. I mean like I mean I, it probably took a while for them to build trains, yeah. but like a train is not like they have they have an army that's on motorized boats that are going to Russia to blow them up and shoot them in with machine guns and barbed wire. Well, let's be fair. Machine guns weren't really a thing until a good way through World War One. But they did have them in the Russo-Japanese War. There were, there were machine guns, but most people are still using... True. Single but here shot. nobody's using a gun except right. for that a billion future vision. The one kind of demon guy has a forever sawed-off shotgun for some reason. Yeah. But like... And I get like they go to like oh there's a oh, what is does one of the places they go have like a trolley? Did I make that oh, up? Oh maybe yeah maybe the one city. Like it's like oh wow and like maybe this is my view of like there's like this is Demon Slayer is taking in the backwoods. This is Demon Slayer in America is like it's taking place in Appalachia in yeah. the 1910s. Yeah. But Which, it just seems 1910s so... in Appalachia. Those guys didn't have shit. No, but like that's the thing. It's like. If this is this big organization that's been around for hi, this is this is the stitch and bitch about Demon Slayer. I'm gonna stop so we can actually have a real conversation about what we're supposed to be talking about. The first chapter's fine. Well it's weird that he can smell things. Here's the thing. It's really hard for me to to disconnect um my viewing of the anime yeah. from this. You're not supposed um, to. <laughs> I will say I had uh I had heard, I think Ben said this, that the the art for the manga was pretty bad. And I wouldn't say this is particularly good, but I also wouldn't say it's bad. Like it's, it's 
mediocre, but it has a style and it's sticking to a style. For what the anime looks like. Yes. It's all the drastically different. All the characters constantly look like when Tanjiro is like, we're having a comedy moment. So Tanjiro is drawn more simply. That's what he looks like all the time. I that's, I think that's going a bit too far. <laughs> um, they, they, they're, there is a distinct line that the the art makes between like the chibi, you know, yes, round they're not, stuff you're, you're versus right. He's the not always one. in that. Um, but yes, it is more towards that. But end. When, especially when you when you compare it to what the anime looks like, yeah. and also specific to Ben when he is reading this and My Hero Academia, and obviously yeah. we didn't look further into Demon Slayer, but further into My Hero Academia, the art is like immaculate. Right. I've seen the panels, and I don't know if Demon Slayer gets better or not art wise. I'm so, sure it does. He has to keep drawing. So, in saying that, like the the art stuff, the fact that you know I can't really disconnect this from from the the anime. Yeah, I will say, reading this first chapter, I was really surprised. I I could feel it. Really, the the, the emotional connection that Tanjiro had with his family, and those those emotional beats that happened. Um, the fight choreography I thought was pretty well, well done. I, I, looking at it, I was like, wow, the the anime is sort of doing this beat for beat. But when haven't we? we this is the joy. Is like we get to go to a a recent enough one where it's like we've read other first chapters out of Jump that are these big shonen adventures. Like this doesn't. I don't think this addresses itself in any particular way that made it so much more than other ones that we oh, liked that yeah. we thought were good. Like that's what I find I'm, interesting. Like, I'm not it's gonna easy to see the spark now because it's a raging fire across the planet. I'm not gonna try and defend how well Demon Slayer has done overall yeah. from this, but I can see in a similar way, like I said earlier, with Bleach, where I'm like, oh, oh, okay. Yeah, I can sort of see this. I can sort of see it with Demon Slayer. It's not I wouldn't, if I had come to it with no context at all, I would never I say, wish I could zap my brain and yeah. just do the episode and then get my brain back. <laughs> I, I would never, I would never say, oh, this is going to be a supernova. Like, I don't it, think we it ever doesn't, could. It doesn't have that. But it does have enough that had I read it fresh, I would have gone, oh, this is interesting. I'm going to read this. I think I would have said this was good. I think... I like I can view the lens and it's not like it's it's I, we have said it before and I can't it's really hard to kind of separate your brain but it's like it's interesting of like people don't know what demon like demons are believed but not really do we ever learn something about his grandmother I don't think so like it seems where they set that up of like she said that before she died and it's like that's also a was that thread line the dad's mom or the mom's mom because if it was the dad's mom there is a connection to the the demon slayer lineage yeah i mean probably that line is dad if that's that the lineage sense, line then. it would make more sense that she knew about demons and would speak about them like they exist but also knowing about demon slayers because they're a core that's been around for ages but that's mm -hmm. not things we know right now it's only chapter one um i think i don't know if i can 100 say this is not the axe grinding inside of me and this <laughs> is a thing that i would have called out as bs in any other first chapter we've read from jump but it's like you meet this entire big family and they are dead so fast yeah like i'm not gonna like i think the little moment when you meet them is cute because it's all like we want to go with you big bro tanjiro like did we really need, like and nezuko has a baby just to show She's, look how caring he is. She's caring for the baby. Also, dad's dead. I think there's probably... But I guess like if that's the thing, is like you need to show that, like you need to show very quickly when you do not have time for it that Nezuko has humanity. So right. that when she is the one that lives, they have something to tug on besides just, we are siblings and I care about you. And they did which that Which I think thing... is important because as we learn in the series, Tanjiro really cares about Nezuko and I feel like that is one of the main supporting pillars of the manga. Yeah. And they, they did that thing where, like, he's unconscious and, like, his family comes and visits him and stuff, which they do a couple more times throughout the series. Yeah. So it's not completely Lost. out there to, to be, like, set up this family and then they're dead immediately. They do come back to some extent. Um, but, like, because it's, like... Because I can, you know, look now and look like I want to try to take more of the thoughts and things things I think about from other things where we literally just have the first chapter of like you have to get to the action. You can't spend too long in a shown anything like this faffing around. And to be to that end, you don't see any demons besides Nezuko in this. You are correct. You never see the demon Muzan. 
Yep, you never see MJ. So the only action in this is when Giryu comes and they're fighting him. I that felt like multiple episodes into it, the it anime for been. some reason, which is weird because like how do you like I think well I guess the anime clearly spent time making connections. I mean, it's been years since we watched it. I'd be curious mm. to watch that first episode I now. I feel like I, that it felt wasn't like, that different. That but... felt like it was a couple like that for some reason my body told me it was like episode three or four before that fight happened and I don't know if that was just we had to split it up across so. nights or something because that doesn't make any sense to me reading this chapter I do seem to remember that you see at least like Muzan's back or something in the be- in the beginning um, I think that's in the first chapter somewhere yeah uh, no I don't think it is okay I guess because you don't Unless know that there's a big that. bad yet that it's just this could have this could have been freaking Joe chill this right. could have just been another demon which also because makes what sense is that family because going to do it's, it won't be until Tanjiro gets near him and goes, oh my God, I, I recognize that smell. That's yeah, the that's person the... who killed my family. Yeah. So I, 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 I think there's, I think there's a good, a good amount here for, to say like, this is something good. It's not necessarily something that you would peg as it's going to be amazing. It's going to take off and everything, but it's a series that, has enough meat there. They get you emotionally connected enough. They, they show, show you some enough action battler stuff. Like right. everything is set up very. It's a good first chapter of one of these shown with a guided hand because yeah. we've had so many where it's just like you jumped in too quickly and you gave me no emotional connection or like we just spent the whole time world building but it, nothing was interesting enough to warrant it. So we got to the end of the first chapter and it's like, well, where's the hook? Yeah, and we have a really strong hook of. A demon murdered my family. <laughs> you have the big hook of I need to figure out what happened to this demon and get revenge, but you get the small hook of my sister Nezuko is dying. I need to make sure yeah. she lives and figure out what this whole situation is. And you know what this first chapter doesn't have that would have made it horrible is a flashback. <laughs> <laughs> a problem that Demon Slayer will have at some point soon <laughs> in the manga. How can you flashback? There's nothing to flashback to. Technically, you flashback by virtue of you start in them walking through the snow, and you. Technically, oh shit! The whole chapter is a flashback. You oh my god! Flashbacked <laughs> after page one. You have flashbacked <laughs> to before the demon strike. So yeah, oh, not the whole. The it's, majority of the chapter is the first half of the chapter is a flashback. <laughs> what, it's up until because what the in media res of the first page is right before they meet the demon slayer. Yeah, unless it's after that, I don't know. I don't oh, think so. Shit. I spoke out you of turn. You spoke too soon. <laughs> These have been here since the beginning, Brad. God, I'm- Snuck up on me. I'm dying to read One Piece chapter one so badly and have a similar but different conversation about it. I don't know what direction I'll, we'll, we'll, we'll come from it at, but Maybe like- Maybe we should do that for 50. Yeah, feels like a good 51. Yeah. But like, I mean, I guess this is the part to talk about, like, I wish I would have, again, I also wish I would have checked chapter counts for Dragon Ball and Bleach because like, I mean, maybe again, because One Piece is fresh on my head, like 200 for a thing, for a thing that made this much money selling manga, not just, not not the anime and not all the movies and the merch. Like I said, the ninth selling is manga, only the manga of all time. What? That's like 21 volumes? <laughs> uh, like Undead Unluck is in the 200s right now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And it's not selling. I don't think it's anywhere even on the chart. It's a, it's a, it's a miracle that it lives. Why didn't we do Undead Unlock for one of these round numbers? What? Because it's not a hit as much as I want it to be. As much as I want to will it into existence. Okay, so it has to be a hit. All right. Well, it has to be like these. It has to be a pillar. Yeah. Like Dragon Ball is a pillar. Bleach is a pillar. One day we are going to like hi. Full wait Metal to, Alchemist here to spoil it. Full Metal Alchemist is not a. It, we are going to cover Full Metal Alchemist, but it's not a pillar. How is it not a pillar? Uh, well, I mean, it's one of the highest rated anime of all time. It's not a shonen pillar. Uh, I want to cover it at some point. It would be a five instead of a, a, a ten number. Okay. We are covering it. That is not a like that is the thing that is happening. Because hey, I, listener, if you have feelings we have about, an arc about our that. episode structure, come on our Discord and chat with yeah. us about it. No, here pil- pillars in my brain outside the ones we've covered. Naruto is a pillar. Mm. Um, uh, technically, I'd say uh, oh, I, I want to say JoJo, but JoJo doesn't feel like that. Like when I like of jump, I would maybe is more an accurate way to put yeah. it. But like Naruto's on there, One Piece is on there, um, Black Clover is technically on there, but not as much. Um, I mean, Demon Slayer is. 
at a different point in my life, I would have said My Hero Academia was, but it's not. <laughs> um, Jujutsu Kaisen feels like the interesting car to catch up on because Jujutsu Kaisen, I feel like, started around when Demon Slayer is, and it got big, but it didn't get as big. Yeah. But it's like, it's the big... Jujutsu Kaisen's the big boy on the block and jump now outside of One Piece because, I mean, Demon Slayer's been done for a while. My Hero's now done. Like, who's the... Like... We, I think what we know, Jujutsu Kaisen is ending by the end of this year, if not early next year, because I think he said by next Jump Fest he's going to be done. Because this isn't Oda saying, I'll be done in a few years. He, this <laughs> is him going, by next Jump Fest it'll be done. Like, who is it? Who's the torchbearer then? Yeah. And I don't know. Astro Royale. Is, I, I haven't <laughs> thought about that in a month, if not months. Oh, my God. Uh, Ultimate Exorcist Kyoshi. Read yeah. that new chapter. Remains my boy. I'm I don't know. <laughs> I'm enjoying it. Like, and it feels like it feels like it has legs. It feels like it. That is hi. This is also the corner. If you can do secret world building, where you get the sense of there's more going on, but we don't have to pay attention to it yet. But me, the author, knows it, and I'm kind of feeding you things. It's the thing I love about One Piece is that people can conjecture things that we don't learn for ages in the future because Oda already has in his brain these details, but he's not spending the time to talk about them. But the world still has to bump up against those details. So through those little, like, it's like echolocation hmm. or the video game The Unfinished Swan where you're in, like, a, a world where you can't see anything and you throw paintballs and that shows you the, like, shape of the world you're in. Except you can't actually see anything until later. <laughs> Well, it doesn't confirm it, but you get that, like, because it's like he knew this fact from back then, things bump into that yeah. by virtue of how the story has to move in that moment. And that tells you things because he has it in his head. And that's what Kiyoshi feels like. To an extent, that's what Demon Slayer feels like. Because I feel like also sometimes we get to these. The, the, the metaphor I always use is that, like, okay, the dog caught the mail car. Now what? Right. And so many of them, because they feel like one shots are like, okay, you got the thing. Do you I know did. where you're going next? And like, I feel like 50 to 60% of the things we read from Jump don't have that. Demon Slayer yeah. obviously does because it clearly ends with a, like I said, the big hook and the little hook. Yeah. The media. I did. Hook, I um, say. I, one thing that I, uh, I didn't touch on, but I, I specifically noted when I was reading it, which in hindsight, it's super obvious, but the way that they introduced his ability to smell things really well. As just sort of like this is just a normal thing that Isn't he does. Isn't it weird that that has no backstory? Yeah, I guess. I mean, like I'm not against. Like it's that's more. I'm shouting. We've I'm, read I'm another shouting right series now, about recently Slayer, about like, Super Smeller. We have so. f foreshadowing, <laughs> foreshadowing for a future show and jumping again episode that's technically already it's, been recorded. It's definitely just a thing that exists. Although his ability to smell people's weak points. Is a bit of an ass pull. It's but like it's it's weird because it has nothing. Like, is it because he works with Chark? Like, there's no, there's no thematic connection. Well, no, that's point. the thing. It's just every once in a while, it's people strange. are born who have a higher sensitivity to smelling things. But why him? Like, I just it's an interesting. I like I'd be, I'd be really curious how the author came to this as a concept. Well, yeah, that's. I don't think yeah. it's bad. I don't think it's hack. It's just like strange. Yeah. I guess it's one of those things where they're they're sitting there going, okay, I want to write a story about uh, you know somebody who fights demons with a sword. What would be an interesting thing that I could have that character do that is somewhat realistic? I think it's the thing because I think we've seen in some other series is like, hey, your main character, give them an interesting quirk, right? Like I feel like that's a thing that's in manga and anime a lot, where it's like this character ends their sentence with like neon or like there's certain ones where it's like <laughs> they double up the way they speak and like by and large in America or in the West, whatever, like we don't make characters that are gimmicks. Yeah. And I think that's a missed opportunity. And I think that's the thing here is just like, here is the character. Also, there's this factoid about them. Right. And I think that gives you more, if you plant that seed early, it gives you more things to tug on and the author will pull on that smelly string i i do like i do like the concept though because it like gives them it's like before he's actually powered up it gives him a way to get through a lot of the fights in a in an interesting way that isn't just like oh he's more powerful yes I, I, yeah i like i like the novelty of it it's just strange how un thematically feeling wise integrated it is with literally everything else we learn about it mm -hmm. They should have connected the fact that he's smelling is breathing through your nose 
And then we get into the whole breathing thing. What is smell but breath? through the <laughs> Brad is no selling me on this. He's I don't even know how you feel about it. No. I mean, I guess you're not I'm wrong. I'm trying. I this is me <laughs> trying really hard, Brad. I'm not saying it's good. I'm just trying to sell it to you like it is something. Sure. It's clearly not. You're not buying. What if the power up comes from the fact that there's oxygen in the air and it goes into your bloodstream through your lungs? What if he smelled a good smell and that made him fight better and he learned new techniques? Well, he did defeat that one upper four when the the hot lady Hashiro was around. So. What if, did any of them ever try to make a bad smell? Was Tanjiro ever done in by a bad smell? I seem to remember there was at some point, there was something bad and it affected him more than other people. That sounds right. Uh, I don't know. It's Demon Slayer. You know about it. If you don't and you're listening to this podcast, how? I would buy the volume. I would buy the volume, but in the context of going back to it now and the curiosity of where the first couple chapter goes to specifically relate it in my brain to other new series we have started. I want to compare the first yeah. I want to compare the first Tankobana chapters to Demon Slayer to the first Tankobana chapters in Ultimate Exorcist Kiyoshi, a manga that I'm really <sighs> enjoying right now and I can't have future future vision because it's only like seven chapters in. And I want to look at those two next to each other in context and go, how do I feel? What are we doing? What I should say is, if I had read this, started reading this when it came out, I would buy the Tankabon. Interesting. I wouldn't, I'm not going to buy it now. I, I can say that I can separate my brain out. I don't think I can, but I would say, I don't think I would. I don't think there was anything here that but like I don't know, like it's so like I'm I have so much baggage well, on it. And the other thing is, you heard it, listener, come out of my mouth. If I had been reading this as it was coming out and then it got an anime and then I watched that anime, I would be hyped as shit. Yeah. We'd feel like we feel about when Sakamoto Days is going to kick in an anime and everybody's yeah. going to get it. But it's curious. I mean, admittedly we're working through Ben telling us, but it really does feel like that Demon Slayer was a fine manga and then the the anime just like yeah. made it another level there's this is a conversation we have a lot about like we're reading a manga and then the anime comes out and it's like does the anime actually add something to it and there's a lot of them recently that yes uh chainsaw man freerin chainsaw, be... chainsaw man was what sometimes there's did it add something or did it do something differently because right. i would continue to say chainsaw man did something different for for I will say the better because I think it does hit what it's doing. It's like I don't think you could have the same tone as just the comic because the comic, by virtue of what it does with its images, just doesn't work the same in motion. Right. You'd have to you'd have to do something else, which they did, and I think it worked really well. Um, you know, but I go back to Undead Unlock, which the people have not heard that episode. Like the first episode of that anime feels wrong. Yeah, like it it did something. There, there was cl like there's clearly a directorial eye. They're not just like phoning it in, but it just feels not like. Undead Unlock. But for Demon Slayer, more Elevation. so than I think anything else we've seen. It's what I want to see happen to Elusive it, Samurai, because Elusive Samurai, that anime, yeah. is, is money. It is immaculate. It really just it elevated it so much. And I think that's probably the thing. The anime is so well executed, even if we have some issues with it. Yeah. It's just so beautiful and sound design and lighting and all that stuff that it just like... It takes it in the stratosphere. Here's my question to you. Why Demon Slayer? What is it about this series that made it explode more than anything else? Because I always thought back when things were starting out, we were on the first scene of things, I always thought My Hero Academia was bigger, and it's just not. I think the story is simple enough because I do feel that like a lot of times... Uh -huh. Stories that are too complicated, that are too over the top, too emotional, too dramatic, that kind of thing, lose people, the general audience. I think you're right. Because this is the, oh, pardon me for using this word, this is the normie anime. Yeah. Yes. What this does is it, it has all those elements. It's yep. got drama. It's got action. It's got all that. But none of it's too complicated. Yep. A relatively sim simplistic story. And then you add on to that. One of the most beautiful animated and 
all that stuff I just said. Yeah, if you're young, if you're yeah, a young you've person, you've never really such seen anime, and this yeah. is your first one, like, I could see you getting pulled in. I would see me getting pulled in. I mean, I'm still watching it. This reminds me, like, I want to say over a year ago, maybe, um, I talked about wanting to do an episode talking about, like, what are good, like, what are good or not good entry stuff, where, because I think I was, I was watching or reading more of Jujutsu Kaisen. It's like, Jujutsu Kaisen is not a beginner's anime. Yeah. It expects you to, to feel in your body a lot of shonen tropes. Like, have you read a good chunk of Naruto? If you haven't, you're not really equipped for Jujutsu Kaisen <laughs> that much. Can you get through it without that? Yes. But, like, yeah, plonk, plonk somebody who's never watched anime and never read a manga in front of the first episode of Jujutsu Kaisen or like the first season of that or the first season of Demon Slayer and they're going to be fudging confused at Jujutsu Kaisen. Yeah. And I love it, but I think it's just because I've been growing up with this stuff, so all of what it asks of me, I'm, for the most part, able to give it to it where Demon Slayer doesn't ask a lot from me and I think that's why now, like, hamburger, hamburger, hamburger. And I think that's why I'm fresher with it, but it's like, Oh, that wasn't a good, that's not a good metaphor for here. Of like, some people can only eat hamburger, but like, it's a, like you said, I think it is more simple and straightforward, which I think that just makes it more accessible to people. I think there's, there's something. Because a lot you have to wrap your head around in Jujutsu Kaisen that if you don't want to think all the time, you're going to have a bad time. I think there's something that we forget a lot. Us as podcasters who consume all this media elder statesmen because even before we had the podcast i would and, say we were elder weeb statesmen right and even our, the people who listen into this yeah the people in the in our community and shonen flop community like we are all people who are heavily involved in so many different aspects of anime and manga i think it's easy for us to sort of forget that the vast majority the of niche. people first of all don't watch anime or manga or read manga at all and then when you boil that down just watch anime like these are people who don't know the tropes they don't consume a lot of stuff they're they're not as knowledgeable they're just watching a thing because it's cool and interesting yeah like i think my sister's boyfriend watches it or has watched it and when i was like do you know spy family and he went no and i was like Hmm. And I feel like the thing, and also some of it is like when something gets big, it is then more visible because more people are talking about it and displaying mm -hmm. their fandom about it, and that it's like a big Katamari ball. Although so. Spy Family is one I feel should, but go like that's wider, the thing is like why is Spy Family not there? Spy Family is and continues to be, in my opinion, immaculate. Yeah, and it's because it's the one where it's like I don't like I don't my sister's never watched an anime. I don't think I'm never gonna be like but like Spy Family. It's like I think my sister would enjoy Spy Family. Yeah. I think they would both. That's like one where it's like let's sit together and watch this as like a, a bonding thing. So it's just there's just some special thing about some of these series that they they're just they're approachable in a certain way. There's yeah. just some special spark. Also, some of it I don't know if we said in this episode we probably should some of what helped Demon Slayer manga wise explode was that that season was coming out right when we went to covid so everybody was really jazzed about it and yeah. nobody could go anywhere so buying manga was like a really good way to spend your your money and emotional battery on yeah. so but yeah do we have any like i know this is like we're not really following this this sticks with this was a this was a this was a conversation of can you see it yeah, I mean... In the guise of a Shonen Jumping the Gun episode. I think we've covered a lot of the stuff with the story, the action beats, the art. Um, I, th I think we probably hit all of the major points. Yeah. But, listener, if you feel like we missed something... Like, um, please talk us to us. Yeah. I will talk to you about Demon Slayer. I pr both of us probably won't like what I have to say about it. I really need <laughs> to stop and calm down. But, like, I mean... We said it. We've talked about. It. I don't know. We've talked about it on, on microphone before. It's like we stopped watching, or well, I made us stop watching My Hero Academia. We are still watching Demon Slayer. Yeah, I bitch and moan while we're watching it, but we do watch it. the The amount of bitching and moaning during Demon Slayer is not constant. No, it's one of those things where some, you know, a flashback will happen for ten minutes. And Highs and like, lows. What the heck is going on? But for the most part. It's fun to watch Tanjiro run around and be all cute and nice yeah, boy. I love the goofy and, points. Like um, the animation is really good. So action scenes, even if they're dumb, are, are still very and, visually yeah. interesting to the eye and compelling. Like, I get it. I get it. It's not, you know, 
the pinnacle of media of, nope. in, in any way, shape, or form, but it's entertaining. So yeah. It's a cheeseburger. Speaking of which, let's bring this to a close so we can go eat. <laughs> um, thank you, everybody, for listening. Brad, we, 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 we've shirked structure enough, but I'm going to do it here. Brad, hit me with those plugs. Well, as always, we want to thank Segoy Mart for partnering with us. Segoy Mart's a retailer of Japanese snacks, drinks, toys, and merch. They've got all kinds of stuff you can't get outside of Japan. Our listeners can click the link in the description or use code APR15 at checkout to get 15% off their first order. You can let us know what you think about these episodes by finding us on social media, which you can find links for on our website, animepodcasterreincarnation.com. You can leave comments on the episode posts up there, or you can join us on our Discord, like I said, multiple times during the episode, and chat with us there. Don't forget to check out our Patreon, Supporters get perks like getting to vote on which series we cover on Heron Addiction, bonus episodes, and getting the high-quality stereo version of the podcast early. And we'd like to hear what kind of perks you'd like. Of course, we've got to shout out our patrons. So at our Reincarnator tier, we've got Cake Dwarf and Moon. At our Merchant tier, we've got Kill Hour. And last but not least, at our Commoner tier, we've got Rena. Thanks so much to all our patrons. Thank you, Brad. And thank you for listening once more. Make sure you listen to the other podcasts we have on our feed. And, oh gosh, moving these dead bodies is going to be hard. Brad, get the shovel. They're starting to smell. <laughs> Gross. Morning DJ says democracy is a joke. Go, go, go. That's sort of like, um, I want to say if you're getting what I'm getting in my own brain now that I've said it. What is the it's like a fighting game, Soul Calibur? Yeah, yes, okay. I was that's I'm like, that felt Soul Calibur. What's the what's I need to I gotta remember the Soul Calibur line because it's this certain it's like this really specific the fates align. The fates. Well, that's uh, that's um, I think that's that well, that line's Guilty Gear, I think. Soul Calibur, Soul Calibur, Soul Calibur. Uh, oh, sorry. My tablet possibly just died. It does not want to open the drive. I'm swapping to my phone. Got to plug that bad boy Couldn't in. handle the weight of this awesome series. Um, I think I have uh, Google Docs on here somewhere. Google Ducks. Ducksu. Google Ducks. That's uh, Duck, Duck, Go, right? <laughs> it's when they buy it. Oh, why are you? Why are you? Why are you like this? Why are you formatted like this? There's no reason for you to do that. Uh, it's cut off. I don't know why. Maybe I can put it into view. God, fuck. <laughs> what is happening? <laughs> is there a view mode? Uh, since this for is going to go in the in the bleeps, he turned on <laughs> the, the light on I his phone. I turned my flashlight <laughs> on. Why do you not have a view mode like my tablet? We're going to do our best. It's not going to be very good, but we're going to try. No, I don't want to cop. A... God, no, no, make the keyboard go away. No. Nope. What are you in? I'm in Google. Maybe I need to be in. Press the check mark up at the top. Press the any key. There's a... what? Oh, check mark. What's the check mark do? Oh, it makes it go away. Cool. I don't need to look at this stuff. Also, for some reason, all of it is formatted in a colored box, the text. I don't know if that was from me copying and pasting things from, like, Wikipedia. You said filming full of lead before, but you didn't... I don't like it. I heard and I, like, I've, 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 I didn't like plugs, but I've now... We've done it long enough that I've grown... I'm the father who said no pets, and then we got a dog, and now the dog is my favorite. Plug me up has too many connotations. That's why I didn't... Yeah. I don't, like, I don't have an ending bit. Like, I don't want to do an ending bit. This feels... I want to do something, though. And we want to thank you all for listening. <laughs> do you smell it? <laughs> oh, wait. No, I know how to end it. I know how to end it. Let me, let me, let me roll back on that.